My name is Travis Young and I opened, own, and operate three retail game stores in Southern California called Kingslayer Games, and this is how I started. As a warning, I don't have a college degree, I'm not an expert on the stock market or real estate or really anything other than opening and scaling retail game stores. The business of game stores has been my passion and obsession for the last 10 years. I'm gonna break down the presentation into three chapters. Chapter one, revenue before retail. Chapter two, growing communities. And chapter three, would I recommend starting a local game store business in 2024? In the chapter one we go, this is really like the history of Kingslayer and a little bit more about myself and my journey up until, up until the point we opened in September of 2015. My background was in retail and in sales. I did uh, retail at Staples, and then also B2B sales for Staples, and then also UPS. It was very common that I would have some sort of side hustle or side gig I'd be working on uh, on the weekends just to earn some extra money. It's California after all, it can be, can be pretty expensive. I, I had a computer building company I started, that was my first seller's permit called TY Computers. And, um, and that was, uh, I, I think I built all two computers off of, uh, you know, folks that wanted a computer built for, like a gaming PC for off of Craigslist. Um, after that, I started an iPhone repair company. I had broken my phone and I probably like, I broke my phone in like 2013 and looked up how to fix it and realized that there was an opportunity on there. So I um, started a, uh, just a business to consumer, uh, a phone and you know, iPad repair company. Um, actually ended up getting a retail business, uh, retail location in Santa Ana, and my brother-in-law both worked um, for that business, and we just repaired phones and repaired uh, tablets, and that was like 2013, 2014. From there, I, I got that my job at UPS, my career was shifting, um, and focused on that. In 2014, I started selling my personal collection of video games on, on eBay and uh, on Amazon, and then I realized it was pretty easy to go do garage sales and find other, um, other goods to sell, on, on, mostly on eBay at that time. And that started doing that started going pretty well, and I realized it was pretty easy to acquire goods, but it was hard to scale. The question I asked myself was like, how hard would it be to get an account at like a distributor to sell goods from out of my apartment? And back in 2014, that was a little bit easier than it is now in some ways. And uh, I was able to get accounts with certain distributors that would sell to my apartment, and I could sell back on on Amazon and eBay. And that was toys, books, like Nerf guns, really anything I could find that was profitable to sell on specifically Amazon at that time. I would buy, repack, repackage, ship to Amazon FBA, and, and I started this online business. So in the summer of 2014, I scaled that business, and by the Christmas of 2014, um, it had to move out of my apartment. So I, this online business that I started at that point, the business name was Games Comics WC. Awesome naming conventions up to this point with TY Computers, Games Comics WC, and that business was doing about $25,000 a month in gross sales, uh, about a 40% profit margin, and it was all um, you know, goods I would receive, repackage, and, and some I would ship direct to consumer, and some I would send to Amazon FBA for fulfillment. So you know, this is 2014, I was doing all this stuff in the evening, so I had my day job, and I was doing this side hustle where I was selling you know, really anything I could find from, from hobby distributors that would sell to me in my apartment. And Christmas of 2014, that business was, um, was you know, we were kind of bursting at the seams, and uh, we had a two bedroom apartment, um, boxes and cardboard and bubble wrap everywhere, and UPS drivers were, were delivering, you know, sometimes 30, 40, 50 boxes of goods on my second floor apartment. Felt, I felt terrible for our UPS delivery guys, but you know, I guess for them it was, it was good business, but um, it was just a ton of work. And in, the, in, in December of 2014, I signed a lease down the street um, in Fountain Valley off of Mount Hermon, and I moved the online business to that space. $1,000 a month, month to month lease that I got. Uh, it was basically a handshake deal to start um, this, to expand Games Comics WC, so the, this Amazon business basically. Um, mostly uh, books, some toys, some board games, started getting into that, that type of good, but I really was coming at it from a business perspective and not, um, not really a hobby perspective. Games Comics WC was doing fairly well, and in, um, in the summer of 2015, the industry changed, and this company called Asmodee came out. And they bought a lot of the board game, the smaller board game companies that we would buy and sell on, on, online on Amazon. In order to sell these games online, you must have um, brick and mortar retail hours. Like you need to have your business on Yelp, it needs to be on Google, you need to have a website, you need to have hours where people can come in and buy your goods and then you can sell online. And so at the time my brother-in-law was, was working for me and we were like, well, we already have this business that's doing about a million dollars a year in, in sales. And, um, and I was propping it up really from my, my income I still had, uh, my, my day job. And it's like, well, in, in order to be, to, in order to keep this business growing, we have to open 
a retail store. I had worked retail in my past when I was at Staples. I was like, well, I, I think we're opening a retail store. Um, decided what to call it. And you know, Games Comics WC was not an option. After, you know, Game of Thrones is really popular around them, but I was also, and still is, I was and still am a very big uh, Anaheim Ducks fan. And we hate the Kings. The combination of hating the Kings and um, Kingslayer being a pretty pro a prominent and popular character in Game of Thrones. A uh, shout out to our boy, Jamie Lannister. You know, Kingslayer, we knew Kingslayer was gonna be in the title. And the thing I was into at that time the most um, was, was comic books. I was really into comics and um, books like Manhattan Projects and Saga and some of the more indie books I was really into and some of the Marvel stuff. And uh, because I was into comics, it was like, and we were already selling some books online, some comic book related stuff. It's like, let's well, just Kingslayer Comics. Why not be a comic book store? Now that was like the one of the biggest mistakes we made was to be a comic book store out the gate because that industry was going in the other direction. Um, but that's what we were. We were Kingslayer Comics and we opened our doors um, in about September of 2015. And um, by we opened our doors um, with no trading card product in, on the shelves. It was not in the plan at all whatsoever. We were comic books. I had some like Star Wars action figures, some Nerf guns, and we were not in a retail center. We were in like off the beaten path um, in a commercial district. It wasn't even like part of our, like, there was no reason for us to have a retail store like in the spot we were. We were subleasing from an auto, we were subleasing from an auto body repair place and, and selling comic books. It was like kind of ridiculous if I'm being, if I'm being quite honest. Like people were like, what are you guys, what the hell is this place, you know? Um, and I didn't even really know. And it was basically a front, right? Like I needed, I needed this brick and mortar retail business to front my online business was was the, the pivot that we were we were experiencing. So we put a Kingslayer Comics decal on the window and said, let's go, we're a comic book store and we have business hours. And I think we were just Monday through Friday at the, at the start. In the first week of us posting that we were open, um, maybe the first day, someone came in, I don't remember who it was, someone came in and said, if you put tables and chairs in here, people will come and play Magic. And I was like, what is Magic? And they said the card game. And I was like, okay, I had the card game. I had some cards when I was a kid. Um, that was my like, that was my exposure to card games and exposure to magic. I had some Pokemon cards that I traded in junior high. Um, and I had some magic cards, like some unglued, like silver border cards that I thought was magic that I tried to play at one point. But that was my exposure and experience with TCGs. Except I did play the WoW TCG for a while. Um, that was, so I did have some experience, but it wasn't really, you know, it wasn't really experience. Someone said, put tables and chairs in the store and we'll come play Magic every day or at least on Fridays. And I was like, all right, well, like, I don't have like, like what the hell else are we gonna do at the store if not listen to what the customer wants? And I have it, you know, my, my background and my expertise was in business and customer service. So I was like, okay, sure, I'll buy it. So I went to, I think I went to Costco in Fountain Valley. I probably bought some tables and chairs. We put them in the store and, um, and I called Wizards of the Coast and said, hey, we're a new retailer, a new, a new game store or whatever. And, um, so we got approved at the WPN to be a Magic the Gathering store, and we hosted our first FNM like two weeks later, and it was a Battle for Zendikar pre-release. I still remember um, expeditions were pulled, and we ended up buying a Scalding Tarn off of someone that someone like opened at another store, and I was like, what is going on? Like, my world had completely changed from we're buying and selling board games online to uh, I'm now buying single TCG, you know, single cards and like learning how to sell them, learning what this is. I, my mind was blown. I had no idea what I was getting into. And the trading card space was was wild. Like I soon went to my first Grand Prix and learned about um, vending and about the whole industry. Like you just, you don't know how deep and wide the hobby of trading card games is until you like walk into one of those exhibition halls and you see how many people are playing games. And you're like, okay, this is like much bigger than I realized. And so that was our, uh, that and, and uh, all that to say, uh, the reason why I give that, I talk about revenue re for before retail in that speech is because it would have been, um, now knowing what I know now about the, the profit margins um, or lack thereof at times in our industry, if I had tried to save up money or if I didn't have economic momentum going into opening that store, like I was already, we were in a you know, revenue positive, right? So we were doing, we were doing 30, 40, $50,000 months in gross sales at that point in time. That could help us pay for stuff, right? It helped us pay for, for inventory from wizards, helped us buy tables and chairs, helped cover you know, alarm bills, any repairs we had to do. Like all the stuff that comes up that you don't really expect to be paying for when you start a business. And we had built a revenue model. So my advice to anyone that's starting or thinking about starting a retail business, especially in the hobby store industry, 
is it's not that hard to go get revenue before you go retail. So you can start a TCG player account, you can buy and sell singles, you can go to like Shop, Shop Goodwill is a great place to find singles uh, if you're trying to find bulk. You can go to garage sales and find all sorts of stuff. You can go to swap meets, like there's there's people on OfferUp that will have stuff uh, for, for cheap. Um, there's Facebook Marketplace, like the, the tools that are available now, you know, 10 years later from when, when we started Kingslayer are, are massive. And the amount of people that play card games and the types of card games you can get into um, there's so many ways for you to go revenue first and you don't necessarily all, all need to be all cards. You could be board games, you could be um, any, I mean, really any product. Um, so you could just build a revenue mechanism, whether that's through um, through marketplaces like Facebook Marketplace or, or OfferUp or through eBay or Amazon before you have to sign a lease and, and go into like a full commitment of opening a retail store. Chapter number two, growing communities and scaling. So I'm gonna keep this one a little bit more on the brief side. If we were looking at types of content I can make in the future. I think there could be multiple sub segments and chapters about this, but I'm gonna keep this very, very simple and straightforward. If you wanna grow a community in this industry in hobby games, so trading card games, board games, D&D, Warhammer, miniature games, any tabletop in-person type of game, have a Discord. That is the most important thing you could possibly have for your community I, if we had Discord when we started the business or, or knew how to use it, I don't know when Discord started. We probably could have had Discord when we started the business. If we had really leaned into it, and especially where how many how many gamers have Discord accounts. So the way that we use Discord in our stores, we have QR codes everywhere. It's on a link in this video. Shout out to the Discord link in this video. It's on our Twitch channel. It's on Twitter. It's on, it, there's links for Discord absolutely everywhere. And the beauty of Discord is when you join, you can say, for us, we have three stores, but if you just have one store um, or, or you're planning on opening a store, you, you join the Discord, you immediately get to choose what games you care about. So you could pick Star Wars Unlimited, you could pick Pokemon, you could pick Warhammer. And then you get to see the way we have our Discord set up is pretty pretty awesome. If you have any questions about how we set our Discord up, just just like email me, and I'll, I'll be glad to help you. I could probably help you set your Discord up, being completely honest, just reach out and I'd be happy to help. Your, your Discord is a place where your customer can say what games they care about and then you have them basically forever. Unless they don't care about their hobby anymore, um, which can happen, people fall in and out of hobbies. The reason why that's so powerful is now for the, the rest of time, for the rest of that customer's life cycle, if you have anything that you want to tell them about Warhammer, anything you want to tell them about Pokemon or Star Wars Unlimited, you can just tag Star Wars Unlimited and in an announcement channel say, hey, we have new product coming out, new pre-orders are up, new singles came in, and you have a way to directly communicate with that specific subgroup of customer um, in an instant. And people, it's, it is, we, we have subgroups for people that just want to talk in general chat. They post pictures of their pets. They talk about um, their day talk about the community, talk about, they tell you what they don't like about your store, they tell you what they do like about your store, they can DM you directly. Other traditional methods, so having an Instagram, having a Facebook and posting there, different age ranges and demographics uh, consume content in different places. So some go to YouTube, some go to Instagram, some go to Facebook, some want a traditional newsletter, some use text alerts. Um, so you still need to post your information in those other channels as well, um, which is a little time consuming. But uh, having a Discord, and once customers come in and you convert them into your Discord, and they have a, and you have a way to tag them based on their interests, game changer for community and scaling. And then all you have to do is listen to your customers, listen to what they want, what types of events that they want, and um, and you know I, there's a lot more that can go into the growing communities part. But to keep that part short have a Discord. If you have questions about Discord integration as a local game store, just email me. I'd be happy to, to try to set something up with you to help you out with it. Scaling beyond that and scaling into you know, store number two, store number three, um, there were hurdles for each each one of those stores and I'll, and I'll have to, for ess in essence of time, we'll, we'll, show, we'll show that in another video. Chapter three, would I recommend starting a game store business in 2024? In my opinion, we're in the golden age of tabletop games. So we have 11 games that we support at our store and there's still some card games we don't support. And there's another game coming on later this year. It seems like every year there's one or two new trading card games that people are really excited about. And all the old good ones are still around. So um, it's, it's a really fantastic time. And I think if you, if you work hard, if you put kindness and prioritize that first for your community, if you listen to them and have a really engaging Discord channel and a way to capture their information when they come into your stores, um, there's tons of there's tons of opportunities for game stores to to thrive and, and to prosper in, in 2024. So 
Like I mentioned earlier in the video, my passion and obsession is really like building and scaling game stores. So if you have any questions or thinking about hopping in um, and being, being one of us, uh, feel free to reach out and, and jo join our Discord. Let us know what games that you play and uh, you can send me an email or DM below. You know, my goal ultimately is that this is useful and that this channel is useful for fans of not just trading card games and playing them, which is great, but also for fans of the industry and the hobby. I think you know, when I was first getting in, it felt like there wasn't enough content from, from LGS owners about you know, their journey and their path. You know, in the comments down below, let me know what type of videos you wanna see in the future. If you own a store, mention it in the comments down below. It'd be fun to check out and see what it looks like. Uh, if you have any questions about how we scale or if you have any advice for me too, I'm always open. Thanks so much for watching till the end of the video. You know what to do down below. And I appreciate uh, all your support of Kingslayer over the years. So we'll see you next time. We'll see you at the shop.